<laughs> you saw that, that, that look in my face? Hey guys, what is up? What's going on? It's your girl Ashley. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video, it's gonna be all about eye brushes. Now, instead of me sitting down and saying, you know, this brush is my favorite because it's my favorite, I'm actually gonna do a demo on this eye look. So you guys are gonna get a toot, a eye toot in this video. And you guys are also going to know and see exactly why each brush is my favorite. I'm gonna spill the tea, the real raw tea. I'm gonna give you guys all the deets. So if you guys are excited, which I know you are because this video has been requested a million times over on my channel, then be sure to press that subscribe button and also click that bell to turn on your post notifications. I upload three new videos every single week. And trust me when I tell you, you don't wanna miss out on it. <laughs> I love you, and without further ado guys, let's go ahead and get into this video. I cannot tell you how excited I am to finally be sitting down and filming this video for you guys. It's been highly requested in the comments. One thing I get the most is blending queen, and also that you guys want a video dedicated to the brushes I love to use for blending. Now, I already have a video on how to blend like a pro, so if you guys haven't seen that video, I definitely recommend that you guys watch that video before you watch this video. In this video, my brushes have changed from that video, so if you want more of an updated version, definitely stick around because I will be going into some tips and tricks and techniques and things like that as it relates to blending. Now, I will just be sticking to using the Jaclyn Hill palette in collaboration with Morphe. This is not her vault palette. I do know that it launches the day that this video is actually gonna be uploaded. I will be picking it up just because it has already been highly requested that you guys um, want me to film with it. So I'm gonna use a Jaclyn Hill palette. I recently picked it up and honestly, I really love the pigmentation of the shadows and I do love the blendability. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick to using this. First and foremost, I do kind of want to get into some of the brushes that I use. Some are from MAC and some are from Morphe. Nonetheless, I'm not a Morphe affiliate and it's kind of weird that I'm using a Morphe palette and Morphe brushes, but hopefully you guys do not mind. Morphe has no idea who I am. I just genuinely have fallen in love with these specific brushes. And that's the tea, people. That's the tea. <laughs> So we're just gonna go ahead and jump into it. The first brush I want to talk to you guys about is my Morphe M441, which is a brush I love to use for packing color right here in the socket of my eye. You guys have seen me use this brush time and time again. One of the main reasons I like it is because it does have longer haired bristles. As you can see in comparison to the Morphe M433, which is right here, the M441 is a little bit longer. And what I also love is that the bristles towards the very center of the brush are longer, whereas the bristles surrounding the perimeter of the brush are shorter so it makes it a lot easier to really pack on color and also blend at the same time so I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate with the shade called silk cream from the Jaclyn Hill palette and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this color and I'm going to pack it right here into the socket as you can see and then once I have that color packed I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to simply start to blend. So it's going to pack on the color, but the outer bristles of the brush are going to really help me blend out the shadow at the same time. One thing I really like to do is really just pat the color and then I will drag it inwards when the majority of the product has already left my brush. Another thing you can do with this brush is put it right here into the socket and then you can also take your brush and push it upwards so that way those small smaller bristles really help you blend out the color like so. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of Silk Cream to demonstrate what I'm doing is I'm really just packing on this shadow right here in the socket. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it, but as I drag it, I'm not gonna drag it down. I'm going to make sure that I drag it in an upwards motion like this because like I said, the outer bristles are a little bit shorter. So when I push this brush up like this, it really helps blend out that color, giving me more of a seamless blend. You could also just go in big circular motion with this brush, I find that that also really, really helps with blending as well. Overall, this brush is really, really awesome for putting color in the socket in an intense way, but also putting color in the socket in a diffused way. It has completely replaced my Sigma E40 blending brush, and you guys know that's a big move. That's a big thing because I used to be obsessed with my Sigma E40 blending brush. 
I'm gonna dip into Pukey with that same Morphe M441. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. And you're gonna be able to just tell the difference as I start to switch color. You are going to be able to see that this brush really allows me to place color into the crease without getting it everywhere and that's what i really really love about the brush in general morphe brushes are very very affordable one thing i will say about them is that they do get kind of raggedy in the process like you really have to take care of them i definitely recommend investing in some kind of brush guard or something like that especially when it comes to a brush like this this is a morphe m514 she's a little scraggly as you can see i have some pieces kind of like frayed out towards the edges. So definitely, you know, you get your money's worth with these brushes, but nonetheless, they are very much good quality. So I'm just packing on this color right here called Pukey, like so. And then I'm going to take the brush and I'm gonna push it upwards like so, just so that way those smaller hair bristles can really just help me blend out the product. And as you can see, overall, I do have a very nice blend to start. The next brush I want to talk to you guys about is a Morphe M514, which is this guy right here. And if I had to compare it to anything at all, I would compare it to my Sigma E40 blending brush. And as you can see, my E40, it's very, very fluffy. She's beautiful. I loved her for so long. Um, but this one is definitely more of a smaller version of this brush. Um, it is more of a smaller blending brush. So if you do have smaller eyelids, I definitely recommend investing in a brush like this because if you have smaller eyelids you want a blending brush that's going to really um, diffuse out the color without covering your entire lid and since this brush is relatively smaller it will be easy to kind of just buff color right here into the socket now since I do not have small eyelids I like to use this for a different reason so whenever I go in with this brush I really want to concentrate a certain color in a certain area so I'm gonna go in with the shade called pukey again which is the color I already placed right here but I'm gonna use a more Morphe M514, which is the smaller blending brush. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm really just going to pack this color right here on the outer V of my eyelid, like so. And as you can see, I'm able to really just pack this color on while also blending it at the same time. Now, when the majority of the product has already left my brush, I will just go in small circular motions right here. And when I'm going in small circular motions, I'm not blending it up way too high. I'm not blending it above this transitional shade right up here. I can really just concentrate and focus this shade exactly where I want it. I also love to take this brush and just put it right Right here into the socket it allows me to deepen up the socket without getting too too crazy it's like I'm kind of placing the color and also blending it at the same time so in comparison to the Morphe M441 you can see that this brush has longer haired bristles towards the very center and then surrounding the brush the bristles do get shorter which makes it really really easy to blend and buff out color now if you need additional blending or additional packing in a concentrated way I always recommend going in with the Morphe M514 this brush is completely different than that of this brush I know you guys are probably thinking well this just looks like a smaller version of this brush but it does not again this is just a all over blending brush so all of the bristles bristles all of the bristles are the same length. I do wanna change up the game a little bit because I don't want this look to look like my last back to school eye look. So I'm gonna pick up the shade called Hunts, which is a really nice kind of like cranberry shade. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna use my Morphe M514 and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm going to use this brush to really just pack this color on right here towards the outer V. And as you can see, I'm packing on the color, but it's packing on the color in more of a blended diffuse way. If I was to go in with a flat shader brush like this and pack on this color, it would be super harsh and then I would have to go in with an additional brush to really help blend it out, which is something I'm not trying to do, which is why I really like the Morphe M514 for this purpose. Once I have the majority of the color right here on the lid, I'm going to take the brush and I'm gonna go in small circular motions like this. I wanna get the color in the socket, but I don't wanna take it above my transitional shade. So I am just going in small baby circular motions because this is really going to get the color in the socket, but it's also going to help blend the color into that shade called Pukey at the same time. Now, one of the biggest things for me is I like to keep a clean Morphe M433 
on hand always no matter what because fun fact this brush right here is a brush that I like to use to really just buff and blur out these edges right here so what I'll do is I'll just take the brush and I'll run it back and forth along this harsh edge to really just soften it so that way the look looks a lot more blended count how many times I say blend it in this video one two three four five six seven and immediately you can see just how much more blended the eyeshadow looks once I went in with a clean brush. Now anytime you want to blend out harsh edges, I always recommend going in with a clean brush. This has been my go-to Morphe M433. It's changed throughout the years. I remember I used to use this brush for overall packing in the outer V, overall packing in the crease. I used to use this brush for everything, but now its sole purpose is to really just buff and blend out any harsh edges I have because my Morphe M441, she just took over the game for me. Moving right along, I will be cutting my crease and the brush I love to cut my crease with is a Morphe M421, which is pretty much just a small concealer brush. Now, one of the main reasons I like to use this brush as opposed to any other brush is because it is a synthetic haired brush. Typically, synthetic haired brushes work really, really well when you're working with liquids and creams. I will be cutting my crease with some concealer. And if you guys wanna know the difference, this is a human haired brush right here and this is a synthetic brush, which which typically is a little bit more stiffer. If you were to try to use a human haired bristle brush or a natural haired bristle brush with creams or liquids, it would honestly just soak up all of the creams and it wouldn't be able to get the job done. So I am just going to take this brush right here and I'm gonna start cutting my crease. By the way, I am just using the Too Faced Born This Way multi-use concealer to cut the crease. And what I like to do is I like to just really pack and follow where my eye naturally creases. And instead of just dragging the concealer, I do like to just go in padding motions because I feel like I have more control over where I'm placing the concealer than when I just go like, you know what I mean? So just, ooh, almost poked my eyeball out. Take your time when you're doing this step. You really just want it to be nice and neat. I'm taking this about a little bit more than halfway. After cutting my crease, I'm gonna switch to a Morphe 167. Now what I like about this brush is that it is just a stiff, like it is pretty, pretty stiff. It's not flimsy, anything like that. So it's perfect for packing on color all over your lid. I also love that it picks up color really, really nicely. So I'm gonna pick up the shade called Cran Apple from the JH palette. And I'm just simply going to pack it right here on to the lid and as you can see the color placement with this brush is really really great it really just packs on the color in a super saturated way and honestly whenever i'm packing color onto my eyelid i do like to use a brush that is a little bit more dense because like i said i'm able to really just place that color in one area and really just pack it on i feel like if i was to go in with a brush like this like a morphe m514 do, 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 do. it would get the color everywhere. It would go like pew. So you really want to use a brush that's a little bit more concentrated. Now that I have my lip color down and in place, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next brush. I really feel like I need to bring the look together. Things are looking a little bit spaced out. We really want everything to melt into each other. So the next brush I'm gonna use is this one. This is a Morphe M507 and this brush right here has changed the game for me it truly has so as you can see the shape is more like a tulip shape as you can see it comes to somewhat of a point i also love that it has longer bristles in the center and shorter bristles around the perimeter just like that of the morphe m441 except this one does come to more of a point now one of my all-time favorite things to do with this brush is pack on color right here towards the outer V. And what I love about a small brush like this is that I can pack color on in a super precise way. But since the bristles are taller in the center and uh, shorter around the perimeter, I'm able to blend at the same time. Like this brush will change your life for precision blending. Like it literally is just that. It almost looks like a pencil brush, but it is a little bit more fluffy and it allows you to really just get in there and really precisely blend. So I'm gonna pick up a deeper shade and the shade I'm gonna use is called Jax. And I'm going to just pick up a little bit of this and pop her 
right here. So right now, my main priority is to really just pack this color closest to the lash line. Also bring it up a little bit right here into the outer V of my eyelid, but I'm not gonna take this too far into the crease just because I do want all of the intensity to lay right here in this outer V area. Once I have a decent amount of this shade packed on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wiggle the brush back and forth so that way it really melts in with the crayon apple color and everything just looks nice, even, and blended. Honestly, this is really going to transform the look. And then once the majority of the product has already left my brush, I'm going to take it and I'm gonna rock it right here into the socket to really just carve out that crease. And I'm gonna go in small circular motions to bring the look together. Woo! Can you see just how much that really just changed the look? Like it looks a little bit deeper, it looks a little bit more blended, like I'm living for it. I am going to intensify a lot more, but this is the starting point I like to go off of. Sometimes I also like to just open up my eyes so that way that brush just glides right into the socket. I'm also taking it a little bit further in to meet with that shade called Cran Apple. And this is just going to, you know, give the look more dimension, which I love. And again, I do like to just take my brush and rock it right here into the inner corner. Once the majority of the product has already left the brush, it really just helps blend out that crayon apple color that's sitting right here in the very inner corner. You can see a huge difference between that of this eye and also that of this eye. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Like... There is such a huge difference between this eye and this eye. Like, do you see how big of a difference that one brush made? Crazy. Another brush I really love to use to pack color onto the lid is a MAC 242 brush. You guys already know. You guys have heard me talk about this brush a ton in the past. So I'm gonna pick up the shade called Sissy from the Jaclyn palette, and I'm gonna pop it right here in the center of the lid to create some dimension because she was looking a little flat. She looked at like she needed something a little bit more light. Oof. So this is the brush I like to pack color on towards the very center of the lid. I feel like I'm just doing all kinds of techniques today to show you guys the full potential of your eye brushes or my eye brushes. After adding that color to the center, I'm just going to kind of intensify the outer V and just make sure that this deeper color just buffs in with the shade called Sissy very nicely. It's always at this point in my makeup looks that I start to realize that, okay, I may have brought my shadow up a little bit too high. So a brush I like to use to correct that is my Morphe M421. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip into in light and what I'm actually gonna do with this shadow is I'm going to pack it right here towards the highest point of my brow bone. And that's the only thing I really like to use this particular brush for because it's able to pack the color on with a punch, which is something I like whenever I am going in with like an intense brow bone highlight. So I'm gonna to take this shadow and I'm going to just pat it right here and I want it to be the most intense sitting closest to my brow and then I want it to kind of gradiate down into my transitional color so I am just going to start off by packing the color right here the highest point of my brow bone Ooh, she looked crazy. Now that we have a nice dark white line on my brow bone, I'm going to blend it out with a firm shader E57 by Sigma. Now what I love most about this brush is while it is a firm shader brush, it's not stiff, it's not too dense. I really like it. I guess you can kind of say it's more of like a fluffy firm shader brush, if you will. So what I like to do is I like to dip the brush into the highlight color. I will dab the brush on the back of my hand and I will use this to really just buff out that highlight and this brush really just allows me to blend my highlight shade in with my transitional color giving me such a beautiful sickening blend trust me when i tell you this brush is bay all day i like to just take the brush and wiggle it back and forth until that brow bone highlight is nice and blended. Another trick I like to do is to always go in with a brow bone highlight whenever I feel like my blending just got a little bit out of control. Think of it like as 
my magic eraser. So let's talk about brushes I like to use on my lower lash line. First and foremost is my Sigma E15 flat definer brush. What I like to do with this brush is I like to pick up the color right here I am picking up Jack's and I like to pack the color on to my very lower lash line. So what I'll do is I'll simply press the shadow right along here and I try not to drag the color on my lower lash line just because I don't want too much fallout. So essentially I will just press. So as you can see, I am pressing it and I'm pushing it super close to the lash line. And this is just going to give me a super intense color payoff. Once the majority of the product has already left my brush, I will just go back in one more time and continue to press the shade on my lower lash line like so. And then I'll go in with a pencil brush. Now, I just discovered this pencil brush as of recently and I really, really like it. It is by Morphe. Before I was using a Sigma E30 pencil brush. So this is my Sigma E30 pencil brush. As you can see, she's a little skinny and she's super... Slim. I guess skinny and slim is the same thing. Whereas my Morphe one, this is a Morphe M321. So the big difference between the two is that obviously the Morphe one is a little bit bigger than that of the E30 by Sigma. But what I love about the pencil brush by Morphe is that it's extremely soft, whereas this pencil brush right here, she's not as soft. And honestly, she probably is a little bit more pokey. Whenever I use this on my lower lash line, like it's itchy, it's scratchy. And I'm not about that because if you guys know anything about me, then you know my eyes get irritated very, very easily. So going in with a pencil brush like this by Morphe is amazing for me just because it's very soft and gentle. So what I like to do with this pencil brush is I will just go over the edges of the shadow I already placed on my lower lash line. Most of the time I've packed so much color on there that it can't even be blended out at that point. No big deal, I am gonna pick up a little bit of a shade called Pukey. I do like to go in with somewhat of a lighter shade just because I feel like it really helps with blending. So I'll take that lighter shade and I'll put it directly underneath the darker shade to really just help blend everything together. And I do like for my lower lash line to be extremely smoked out and I also like to connect it with the shadow on my upper lash line like so. I feel like it really just brings the entire look together. Next I'm going to go in with a shade called Hunt and I'm going to layer it directly underneath that really dark color called Jax. And I feel like to get a really nice blended look, it's really all about how you layer your shadows. You really want it to be a nice gradient and a really nice transition into any shade you lay down next to it. The last thing I like to do is take a little bit of loose powder like so, and I will clean up the edge of my eyeshadow and then I'll go in with liner. Now I'm not gonna do a crazy intense wing or anything like that, but I do want to add liner just so that way you guys could see how this brush works. This is another one of my favorite, all-time favorite eye brushes. This is not a blending brush, so it's not going to apply any eyeshadow, but it applies my eyeliner like a dream. It is super duper skinny, as you can see. This is my MAC 210 eyeliner brush. She's changed the game for me, as all of the brushes I mentioned did. <laughs> Did you pick up on that? All of them changed the game for me, but this one in particular has really elevated the way I do my eyeliner. Before I felt like my eyeliner would go on super thick. With this brush, it allows me to apply my eyeliner in a very thin, precise way. I feel like I have full control over the product whenever I am using a brush like this. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna do a straight line on my upper lid and I'm gonna start in the very center and I'm just gonna do small strokes at first. And as you can see, it allows me to create a very thin line. It's not thick at all. You can definitely build up the line if you like a little bit more of a thicker liner. But like I said, I do have full control whenever I use a very precise skinny brush like this. I'm also going to use this liner brush to line right here in my waterline and I know it sounds really, really weird, but it gets the job done and it doesn't irritate my eyes at all. All right, and just like that, you guys, this is the final and completed look for the eyes. I absolutely love the way it turned out. It's a very nice, smoky, cranberry-esque look. Those are also all of my favorite brushes that I like to use whenever I am blending my eyeshadow. Holy grail, 
never do me wrong. Definitely check them out. I have them all linked down below in the description. And with that, let me know what other videos you guys want to see. I am thinking about transferring my vlogs over to a separate channel called Ashley and Ulysses, which was my old vlog channel. Let me know if you guys want them on this channel or if you guys want them over on that channel. You guys want this to be strictly beauty. I definitely love to know your thoughts. I know a lot of you guys are really, really loving those kind of videos. But again, I very much value your opinion. And with that, guys, I don't have much else to say except I love you. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll be sure to catch you guys all on the next one. Deuces. outro of the outro. How about that? If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the subscribe button right here and check out my other video, how to blend shadows like a pro. Honestly, if you want some blending tips and tricks and things like that, that's the video you're gonna wanna watch. Also, I have another beginner friendly video listed right underneath it. Like the video and I will talk to y'all soon. I actually have to go to the gym. This keto life got me like, ooh. No, but really. I gotta go.